In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of what are internal controls and their purpose? So internal controls, it's going to be a big topic as we grow our firm or as we grow our company, we typically need more internal controls, which are typically kind of a form of bureaucracy that we'll kind of put in place. But one that has a goal, a system, there's a reason for the internals growing up and the goals are going to be what we will discuss here. Note that as we have a small uh, system, if we have a, a limited amount of people, if we have a sole proprietor, for example, then we're going to have less internal controls. Uh, one, because it's, it's not feasible given the number of people we have to have some of these larger internal controls. And because two of the cost benefit analysis, we always need to be considering uh, how much benefit are we getting in terms of these goals we'll discuss as compared to the added cost that will be involved when we make a system that is more complicated. And that's typically going to be the case. That's going to be a trade-off. We're going to make a system that will be more complicated with the objective of a safeguarding uh, or achieving some principal goals in order to do so. So one of those goals will be, of course, to safeguard our assets. We want to make sure that uh, you know our cash has safeguards to them and uh, other type of assets are safeguarded. So we want to, in order to do that, in order to get to that, that uh, objective, we probably going to have to give up some convenience. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to set up a system in order to achieve that goal. We want to have a reliable record keeping. So once again, the record keeping is something that uh, a, lot, a lot of small companies may overlook a lot. And we, and larger companies are typically needed to be more required to do so as we get larger. We need to make sure that the record keeping is, is better and better. Small companies need good record keeping as well, but we obviously need the good record keeping in order for us to be able to make good financial statements, make good decisions on those financial statements, be able to discuss our with other people, possibly creditors, our, our typical financial situation. And if there's any problems, then of course, we want to go back and be able to look at those records and see the audit trail for what has happened. So we want to make some internal control systems, which again takes time to have good record keeping, but we want to uh, have good record keeping and do the cost benefit analysis as to how much record keeping, how detailed of that record keeping needs to be in our system to achieve uh, our objective. The internal controls should have e should promote efficient operations and uh, try to encourage employees, of course, to comply with policies. So we're going to put policies in place and we want laws laws as well. Our, our internal controls should comply with legal regulations and they should comply with our regulations within uh, the system as well. So you can think of this in terms of financial controls to make sure that we're, we're going through all the procedures. Uh, oftentimes, if you're thinking through a, a system, uh, there's often uh, safety controls that we want to make sure that the operations are being gone through in terms of a, of a controls procedures. Uh, to, to limit, to, to get to the goals of those procedures, whatever those company policies are. We want to make sure the internal controls are uh, trying to get people to comply and be in accordance with those kind of systems. Internal controls could also help us to uh, prevent any losses within the organizations. Try to, we're, obviously our goals here is still revenue, uh, revenue. So we want to make sure that we are uh, in, a in a position to generate revenue, have sufficient cash flow, uh, to pay off our obligations. So once again, the controls could actually increase our, our uh, expenses, decreasing net income. But the goal of them, one of the goals of them will be to safeguard assets and could be to actually limit, of course, any losses or any uh, cash flow problems. Internal controls should also have a, a type of review system. So the review system, we want to be able to monitor uh, the employee's performance and see and see you know, how the employees are doing. That's going to be a, a part or a component of our internal controls. Now, as we go through what the actual internal controls are going to be when we list out internal controls, we want to be specific in terms of what these goals and objectives are, because we do want to put in a cost benefit analysis. And that can get a little bit tricky as we start to put in procedures such as separation of duties, into a system or making a more complex type of voucher system for a payable system. We want to make sure that we're comparing uh, the cost benefit analysis, what we're going to gain from these internal controls in terms of security, possibly safeguarding the assets or having better paper trail than um, the cost that could be incurred within 
those objectives in order to do so we need to know what these procedures are are uh, oriented towards doing and that's a little bit more tricky than we may think when we start to put in internal controls we typically think well that's a good control just broadly uh, to put in place or we might think that internal controls are universal and they're the same for for any type of organization but really internal controls are something that need to be customized for a particular organization and in order to do that we got to be pretty specific as to what a typical procedure is aimed at achieving in terms of these general goals when we start to look at the actual procedures.